guys, it's Nick the Booksmith. Welcome back, welcome back. To continue on with this miniature house, there's a lot that has to be done. I was hoping to be able to finish it in a second video, but alas, that's not going to happen. This is a lot more detailed than I ever imagined because that's what I do. I imagine things are going to be very simple and straightforward and I can just jump in with absolutely no plans whatsoever and just wing it. Well, you can. It just takes a long time. Anyway, so I wanted to plaster the walls. There's really no way of faking this, so I'm just using some pre-mixed wall plaster that we had in the closet for some drywall repairs earlier. Yeah, not not a whole lot of exciting things to happen here, but I wanted you to see the whole process from beginning to end. So here we are. Instead of watching paint dry, we'll be watching plaster dry, but I will assure you it is no more exciting than watching paint dry. This is the upstairs. I had overestimated how big um, the hole for the little dormer would be, so I'm just filling that in with a piece of this hardboard slash masonite, whatever they call it, in your area. I'm using this stuff because this is what I like to use for book covers, like for big books, not little books, but like big books, because it's tempered and it is less prone to warp. So I thought it might be great for a miniature house. Not gonna lie, the plastering took a minute or two or three or 120. <laughs> you know, thinking back, I was like, well, maybe it would have been easier to plaster the walls before I put the whole house together. And then I thought, no, because then the plaster would get in the way and it probably wouldn't fit together neatly or tightly in the corners. I'm sure there's all different kinds of ways this could be done. This is probably not going to be the most efficient way, but this is the first one I've ever built. So maybe I will learn some lessons or maybe I won't, you know, because that's usually how things go. I might learn a lesson, but that doesn't mean I'm going to remember the lesson and apply it in my next project. You guys know. You know how I roll. The plaster does help to cover the corners, you know, the gaps in all the corners where the walls come together. And this tempered masonite hardboard, whatever it is, has a smooth side and a rough side. So it also helps cover that up as well. I decided to plaster all of the walls in the house and I may be adding trim to them as well but I thought the plaster would be a nice base. And because uh, I thought, well, I could do beadboard, you know, wainscoting or something like that. And I thought, well, you know, the plaster's already out and I'm already working with it. So uh, I can add trim over the top. It's no big deal. Just depends on uh, what I decide to do. This is the outside of the house, which is also getting this plaster work. As you can see, some of the pieces are smooth and some of them are rough, depending on how I ended up cutting them, <laughs> but it, it doesn't matter. I'm stippling with the scraper. I don't know what this thing's called. It was my grandfather's, but it's great. It's got a knife edge and it puts on this plaster really nicely. But anyway, after I smear it all on as evenly as I can, then I kind of do this little stippling motion, making little peaks because uh, when the plaster dries a little bit, like it, it'll get like a crust or a skin over the top, then I take a piece of cardstock or chipboard or something and I just kind of smooth over the top and it just knocks off those edges and it leaves this um, stucco, kind of, kind of a stucco look to it. You're just gonna have to believe me. I don't know if I got all that recorded or not. May have remembered that my camera is temperamental and it will just mm, shut off. It just takes a break, whether I know it's taking a break or not. Yeah, I, st I still need to get a new camera. I'm working on it. <laughs> the plaster is kind of nice because it adds texture and you can make it as rough or as smooth as uh, your skills will allow. I do mine with a rough texture because my skills are uh, sadly lacking, but it also takes paint really well. Paint covers a multitude of embarrassing situations, so that's what's going to happen after all of this plaster is dried and um, knocked down, and then I go over it lightly with some sandpaper. 
not real rough because I don't want to take it all off because you can literally sand it all off but I just run over it just to uh, smooth it out a little bit. I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to be doing above the door. I did cut out, as you saw earlier, this shape, this kind of uh, curved shape, and then I put a stencil on it and put a little plaster design on it. And that might go above the door. I'm still kind of wondering about that but it still has to be plastered and uh, all these gaps and edges and stuff need to be covered so that the whole outside of the house has a cohesive look like I said I, I've never done this before I'm just kind of winging it and I considered doing siding like lap siding but I thought that is a lot of cutting and I just I wasn't in the mood Oh, here it is. I thought I had already put this in the video. I didn't. So here's the little curvy shape that may go above the door. It's just something that I drew out on a piece of paper and I'm cutting it out of matte board. And I'm going to make two layers um, to glue together just because it's not very thick. It's kind of thin. I don't know, matte board's probably, what, two millimeters? maybe thick and sanding is always a good idea sanding is your friend no matter what you're doing I'm just going to put that out there no it's not fun but it is a necessary evil if you want everything to um, look finished so there's two pieces and I'm just going to glue these together very simply just with some white glue nothing special then I'm going to clamp these together so that they don't peel apart while it dries and then another little bit of sanding just so that the two pieces even up because I cut these out by hand so they're not going to be perfect I could have had the Cricut do it but you know the knife was right there and I thought it wouldn't take very long this is just a little one of those sticky stencils I think it's a Martha Stewart that I've had forever and I just got out the plaster and just gonna put a little I don't know design medallion I don't know what you call it. it's a, something I'm gonna scrape off part of it because I didn't want it all okay so now the ceiling and I thought about um, how I was going to make a ceiling I ended up doing something that I did in the library book nook which was I embossed some paper this is watercolor paper and then I have this punch that is I think it's a one and three quarter inch square and I didn't want the tin, the tin quote unquote ceiling to be matchy matchy. So I got out a bunch of my embossing folders. I don't know, five or six. I don't have very many. <laughs> and I embossed a bunch of like my smaller designs so that it would look like the ceiling was pieced together from some different leftover designs. This um, yellow card that you see, that stencil card, I've got a 50 pound box of it. Don't ask. It was on sale on Amazon because it was a return. So, you know, when you can spend like $11 and get a 50 pound box of stencil card, sometimes you just do crazy stuff like that. But it has really come in handy with a lot a lot of projects it is impregnated with like linseed oil so it is somewhat it's pretty sturdy because of that it still warps if you get it wet and stuff but it holds up for quite a while I, I don't know I don't know how to explain it if you work in a school you might know all about stencil card um so I'm just gluing these little squares and I'm just trying not to put the same one next to each other. I'm trying to space them out so that, you know, so it looks nice and random. And I figured maybe this would look like little tin tiles for the ceiling. The stencil card, what I did was I measured out the ceiling and then I glued or taped together this stencil card so that it would match the shape of the ceiling and you'll see here in a second but I wanted to be able to glue these little tin tiles to a base and then attach it inside the house I didn't want to try and assemble this tin ceiling upside down in the you know what I mean so that's what I did 
and I keep gluing it to my um, mat because I, mean, I put glue on the whole bottom of each of these little tiles and then they stick to my mat. <laughs> so I hope this looks cool. Um, we'll, we'll see, you and I will find out together. It worked out pretty well in the library book nook. If you haven't been um, with me for very long or if this is your first video and you're wondering what in the holy heck I'm doing, I will put a link to the library book nook underneath. I'm just using some paint. This is actually house paint. Yeah. It's just this off-white house paint that I had. And I'm like, why go buy paint? Just using what I got. I'm not totally coating these tiles. I'm just kind of dry brushing over the top just so that I, I don't know why I did that. I just did. <laughs> I thought maybe when I do some antiquing to it later, which I haven't done yet, so full disclosure, I don't know what it's going to look like. While I'm doing this voiceover, I haven't done it yet, so it might suck. But anyway, I thought if I gave it just a little bit of paint first, that maybe the antiquing, maybe the antiquing, antiquing, antiquing will be a little easier to apply. So as you can see, now it kind of fits to the ceiling you know so I'm just gonna hot glue it because that's how we roll I wasn't gonna put white glue and then hold it for 30 minutes nope the hot glue is definitely the way to go the little hole on the left hand side in the ceiling that's where the staircase is gonna go you'll see that in a minute and now I'm going to paint everything with that same house paint even if something gets a color a different color on top I thought I would go ahead and get everything like base coated with this off-white. I can make decisions about color later, how, however that's going to work. Because I, uh, again, I don't know. I haven't thought that far ahead. But even the little wood frames and panes for the windows are all getting a coat of this off-white paint. I still need to find some clear acetate or something for the windows. I don't know, I was at a couple of stores this past weekend, and do you think I remembered to look for some clear plastic? Well, no, I did not. It wasn't something that even em entered my mind. <laughs> Had kind of an exciting weekend. Well, at least Saturday was exciting. My husband and I went to a grocery store just to pick up a few things, and on the way home, there was a truck that was a few cars in front of us, and it was a big truck. We're talking a four-door huge Ford pickup. I mean, it was like one of the biggest ones Ford makes. It's a massive truck. And we're, we're driving southbound, about to go through town, and all of a sudden this truck veers off to the right, off the street, and onto like, there really wasn't a sidewalk, there was a curb, but there was like a bus stop, and there Thankfully, there was nobody at the bus stop, but the truck veered off the road, demolishes this bus stop with the bench and the, everything. Uh, keeps going, takes out like a phone call box, you know, like they have like at the corners of some streets, you'll see like this electrical box, but it's like a phone box. Took that out, hit a couple small trees. Then it makes a sharper veer off the road. The first thing that went through my head was like, is, was there like a road rage thing that I didn't see? Because I'm driving. I'm like, I didn't notice anybody getting mad at anybody else, but who knows? And then this truck start. I mean, you see it just bouncing, bouncing because it's hitting all these things. And I'm, I told my husband, I said, something's wrong. I said, somebody had a heart attack. Somebody's having a stroke. Something really bad is happening. And I see this truck fly into the air, literally, and it rolls down an embankment. We're just, like I said, just a few cars behind this truck. So we roll up onto the scene really quickly. And I immediately just, I stopped the car. I told my husband, dial 911. And I jumped out of the car and ran down the embankment. This truck had rolled, but it had landed on its wheels. And when we got down there, it was about two inches from an apartment building literally like that it had almost crashed into and I ripped open the driver's side door and all the airbags had deployed well of course because the truck had rolled I only see one person inside the car somebody else was checking the back seat 
I was trying to talk. It was a lady in the driver's seat. And I'm like, hello, are you okay? Are you okay? And she was totally unresponsive. And of course, I'm not going to try and get her out of the car. That's not what you do. Fire department's going to do that. But I'm just trying to see if she's bleeding. I didn't, she wasn't bleeding, but she was totally unresponsive. But thankfully, a lady was coming up behind me. She says, I'm a nurse. Can I help? I just put my hands up and stepped back. I was like, please, that's not my forte here. I make books and I make bad miniature houses. The nurse was trying to talk to her and trying to get her to respond. And she turned back and looked at me and she said, she's having a seizure. But I guess she had had a full blown grand mal and lost control of her car because she, I mean, she won't even remember the accident, thankfully. Um, oh, okay, sidebar. This is also mat board like what you use for photographs or around artwork, you know, for framing. And I am embossing, hopefully, some floorboards. Because <laughs> I thought I could cut a bunch of popsicle sticks or I could do this. So this is what I did. You'll see me embossing floorboards and nail holes. So back to my story. Within about five minutes, I think every police officer and ambulance and fire truck show up and they extricated the lady from the car at which point she was speaking she remembered her name but that was about it so i had to stay and fill out a you know a accident report and all that but i hope she's okay you know when it's something like that you don't you just don't know because i don't know her so it's none of my business but i just i hope she's okay and um, scared the living daylights out of me. And I hope nothing like that ever happens to any of you because, wow, that was, that was so scary. Okay, back to the house. Um, I am installing the floor again with just some hot glue. And I made um, enough flooring for both floors, the top floor and the bottom floor. I figured now we could use some baseboard. So I'm just gonna use some popsicle sticks like you would get at the dollar store and I'm trimming them to fit all the way around in these weird little angles that I um, unfortunately made for myself. And so I'm just cutting them each one by one and hot gluing them into um, the house along the base of the floor. And this is trim that's gonna go around, well, goes around the inside of the door, but you know, you probably gathered that. now. This is a fireplace that I made and the camera wasn't working. While I put together this little fireplace, which is basically just a box of, I made it out of mat board. So it's just a box of stuff. And then it's strips of mat board for the trim. I will put a link to a tutorial that I used from one of the websites that I found inspiration for making tiny houses. And I will link all that kind of stuff down below. She was very helpful with putting together this little uh, fireplace. So hats off to Cinderella Moments. Thank you for helping me learn how to make a little fireplace. I needed that and you can see, um, well, sorry, the camera was like not even focused but I made a little staircase as well but I needed those two pieces in order to finish the baseboard um, and then and then there was a little space where I cut out for the stairwell and I had to fill that up with um, some a piece of wood and some plaster and now a coat of paint is going on everything all the all the baseboard and everything I haven't put in the inside trim for the windows yet because I want to install the glass, well, you know, glass in air quotes, the acetate as soon as I locate some. I'll paint that trim before I install it, but that's after the acetate gets glued in there and uh, cuz I don't want to paint that cuz that would that would really stink. And the staircase was something that the camera didn't uh, record while I was cutting out the sides and then when I realized that when I was cutting out like the stair steps and everything and then it's like well, well why have the camera on for the rest of the build because it was like it was just basically gluing the railings onto the side and I was like oh well I'll just have to do a separate one later I didn't follow a tutorial or anything I just drew a stair step shape as long as I needed it to go from the bottom floor to the top floor. 
and then I just cut out little strips of um, it's not matte board I used the stencil card I think and I cut out enough to be the risers and the treads and I just glued everything on and then the little railings are just little strips of wood um, little like hobby wood this is a dowel that I am taking a piece of the stencil card and I'm gluing it around to make like um it's gonna be like a newel post and so I didn't want it to just be this flat round flat round <laughs> I want it to have some dimension to it this little finial is something that I made with the 3d printer but I could have used a bead or something like that and now I'm just putting a coat of paint on basically everything everything gets a coat of this paint that way no matter what happens it all matches kind of um, initially it helps with my chaotic brain if everything's even if it's not going to stay this color it still helps my brain visualize I don't know if that makes any sense whatsoever but it makes sense in my head I may paint the treads a different color later I'm not sure depends on what kind of aesthetic I go with I know I kind of wanted to do a whitewashed shabby kind of a look maybe maybe a French kind of a I don't know I don't know but everything's getting whitewashed then I'm going to definitely be doing some distressing and aging and I do record that here and this is just some ink some Tim Holtz archive ink and I don't remember what color it's the brown one <laughs> it's the mocha brown one whatever that is and I'm just kind of making like where it would age and where dust would collect you know because I want it to look like an maybe an older house maybe not a brand new perfectly clean crisp brand new house but I wanted it to look like it had been lived in I overdo the aging a little bit and then I just take a rag damp rag and kind of wipe it back a little bit I find it's better if I overdo it and then just kind of wipe away what I don't need in this video you'll see me aging these stairs and also the fireplace but I haven't done anything else as of yet I think the next thing I'll be doing is aging the ceiling and also like the corners of the walls and that kind of thing because I when I was looking around for inspiration for you know people that make miniature houses there's so much and so it's like uh you got to like narrow down what it is exactly you want to do which is hard when there's a lot of options and so again Cinderella moments I love the way she she makes these wonderfully ornate little houses but then some of them are grunged up and I just I really loved that I liked how nothing was perfect it was perfectly imperfect I think is her aesthetic as far as like how the decorating goes as far as building the house I didn't have a plan or anything it was just something that I put together kind of a simple little house plan so I can't really show you any websites in particular but I will put down a list of different blogs and stuff like that that I did use for inspiration so that you can go check them out in case you ever want to tackle something crazy like this no there will not be any dolls this is not a doll house this is a miniature house I'm, I'm not a doll person I think having dolls in a doll house it breaks the spell because for me a miniature house is like somewhere where you'd want to be like when I was a kid it was like somewhere where I wanted to live so having a doll in there breaks the spell like it's not real you don't live there there's a doll in there do you know what I mean all right guys well that is it for this video thank you for watching today and listening to me ramble about my weird weekend and this house build and before I go I would like to start something new a comment shout out and for my first one I would like to shout out all of you lovely people who reminded me where it was I put my craft knife when I lost it yes it was in the box in the lap book I made and without you it would probably still be there today I don't know what I do without you guys obviously I'm a mess so a huge thanks to all of you who comment even if you don't comment I'm okay with that too but it sure is fun reading your comments listening to your stories your opinions and reminding me where I put my things when I put my things somewhere secret on camera 
And a huge thanks to my patrons who help fund my channel. I really appreciate you more than I could ever say. I hope you are all having an excellent week. I am hard at work, so I will see you really, really soon in the next video. Bye, guys.